U.S. officials are closely watching the Chinese military's meteoric growth. It's happening on multiple fronts and fast. The U.S. and China, two superpowers on a collision course over the future of Taiwan. It would be very difficult for the United States to determine whether an incoming missile attack was conventional or nuclear. There are satellite images, and what they appear to show is rapid construction at several suspected silo fields in China. Ten years ago, this arsenal was around 50 or 60. It's now over 100. We see them deploying larger numbers of nuclear weapons. The way that we talk about Chinese nuclear weapons and the risk of war with China has sort of forever been altered by these discoveries. This is sort of an oh shit moment. My name is Decker Wolf. I am a satellite imager analyst specializing in Chinese nuclear forces. We can use satellite imagery to look at the rocket bases, and we can use it to see the movement of launchers and supply vehicles to their forward operating bases. Things like ships mustering, troops moving to ports, those sort of signatures. And a cornerstone on which to build national security. That is how President Xi Jinping described China's rocket force. The People's Liberation Army Rocket Forces is one of the main branches of the People's Liberation Army, which is China's armed forces. It is one of the biggest missile-related armed forces in the world, and they cooperate with the other branches of the Chinese armed forces to facilitate conventional operations, like, for example, a theoretical invasion of a place like Taiwan. For a fifth day today, China conducted military drills in waters and airspace around Taiwan. Taiwan is perhaps the most sensitive flashpoint between the U.S. and China. China's ultimate goal? Take back Taiwan. There are a lot of targets in Taiwan that China would want to destroy on the ground. Taiwan's air force, cruise missiles, and Taiwan's ground forces could be softened up before China would stage an assault on Taiwan. While a serious attempt to invade Taiwan is very unlikely in the short term, satellite imagery would be a very useful way of determining whether or not China was attempting such a thing. The vast majority of the People's Liberation Army Rocket Forces conventional missile arsenal is stationed in the proximity of Taiwan. Any serious attempt by China to do an amphibious invasion would be preceded by a mobilization of those missile forces. So it's very important for us to look at those sites and see how a serious attempt to engage Taiwan militarily would play out. More missiles. This time, the DF-26, compatible with both nuclear and conventional warheads. The DF-26's advantages are strong mobility and flexibility in launch location. The DF-26 is a very important aspect because not only do they want to take Taiwan militarily, they also want to deter the United States from coming to Taiwan's assistance. The DF-26 theoretically has the capability to engage ship targets from beyond the horizon. Leader Xi Jinping promised reunification with Taiwan. U.S. forces, U.S. men and women would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion. Yes. You can see right here, again, look at how big this shadow is. This is another new high bay facility um, to accommodate the fact that the DF-26 is a much bigger missile and you need to have infrastructure to support those things. And so if we go back here, you'll know, you'll see that this was not here in 2019. And then you skip forward to 2021 and they've built this specifically to accommodate the DF-26 missile. Because the DF-26 can carry both uh, conventional warheads and nuclear warheads, it would be very difficult for the United States to determine whether an incoming missile attack was conventional or nuclear. So if the United States want to try and strike a DF-26 launcher before it could launch, it's not clear how much that military strike would trigger a more serious reaction. Eyes in the skies watching China's fast-growing military. Pentagon claims China is increasing its nuclear arsenal at a much faster rate than the U.S. anticipated. Me and my boss had been hearing these rumors, and they were saying that current assessment of the size of China's silo forces was much too small. There's a known training site in China called Jilantai. And it's the place where the rocket force goes to practice things like missile launches and training their forces. And so at this facility, there's a bunch of test pads 
we started seeing these very large inflatable covers go up. So when we looked at these and when we looked at the supporting infrastructure they built here, we can create a signature of what similar sites could look like. So as I was going through China, I noticed a site near the city of Yumen that had covers. So we looked at the covers at Jilantai. And when we looked at the sites at Yumen, the covers that they're placing there are exactly the same. And they're all in this very particular geometric pattern. And they're all spaced exactly the same length apart, three kilometers. And they're everywhere. They're up and down the valley. And they again have these cables running between them. We see the underground command structures they're building over here. We see very clear signatures of a military facility. This is a main area up here. There's an admin building. There are garages. There's a track and field because people are going to, you know, work here um, and they're going to exercise here. One other very interesting signature of rocket force bases is that, well, they're launching missiles. You want to know the weather. And so at these facilities, they all build weather stations. These weather stations all look really, really similar. So that's an additional signature we use to identify these facilities. We are witnessing a strategic breakout by China. New satellite imagery showing what analysts describe it as an unprecedented nuclear buildup in China. Not one new silo field, it's three, and not just a few new missile silos, it's hundreds. There's two big things as to why this was such a massive change. The first is simple numbers. The previous number of ICBMs that China had was around 70 or 80 at this time period. So to see them building 330 was really significant development. China is pushing to develop its nuclear capabilities, its strategic intercontinental capabilities. This could signal a very serious change in China's nuclear posture. Now that they've built them, it would be much easier for them to shift their strategy to be a lot more, not only aggressive, but use these weapons in ways that would make the risk of war between the United States and China much more worthy. On the list of things that keep me up at night, I think it's around number three, after climate change and North Korean nuclear weapons.